changes and we're having a bit of a bass session this evening so welcome uh, hopefully you've got some bass related questions for me um, anyway I, I'm gonna talk about right hand technique today so I have quite a few right hand techniques that I use um, but uh, I'm going to talk specifically about one I haven't got time to go through all of them um, so yeah let me just talk a little bit about kind of my history and how I kind of arrived at the right hand techniques that I use today and uh, then I'll give you some demonstrations and uh, show you some things that you can practice if you're kind of interested in doing them. Um, so anyway, I, I, when I learned to play the bass, I was taught to play the bass uh, as a child, I had bass lessons and I was taught to, to play with my right hand with two fingers. So I was taught, you know, rest your thumb on either the pickup or on the, on the, on the lowest string and then pluck. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what I'm going to do, I'm going to switch on to four string because uh yeah i just it's i think this stuff i, I want to make it clear that this stuff works on, on all kinds of ba bases it's not just for people who have loads of strings on their bases so anyway i'm going to use my four string bass i obviously started off on four string i think that's how most people do start when they play the bass so i was taught to play like this just two fingers uh, index finger and middle finger and that's still you know i used that technique for a really really long time i used it all through my childhood uh, I went to music college, I graduated from music college, I was still using this technique, uh, I even started, you know, I started doing gigs, I moved to London, I started doing gigs in London, and I was still using this technique. I was into jazz, that's what I was into, so I was looking at kind of jazz players, I was looking at guys like Matthew Garrison and Dominique de Piazza, uh, and they were playing just with like, not just incredible speed, they were playing with incredible articulation. Um, and you know, kind of, my, my left hand was was pretty good by this point, and uh, you know, I was playing some fast stuff with my left hand. I was doing lots of kind of hammer-ons and pull-offs, and that was all to try and make up for the fact that I couldn't keep up with my right hand. These two fingers just weren't kind of getting the job done. I couldn't get that speed and articulation that a lot of those jazz guys got. Um, so yeah, I didn't have anyone to kind of teach me like what Matthew Garrison was doing or any of those other guys. I just kind of had to watch them uh, and figure it out. Um, and uh, yeah, so I kind of came upon my own right hand technique really. Uh, and uh, I'm not sure if other people do it this way. I'm pretty sure that this technique is kind of different from what Matthew Garrison does or any of those, those kind of 
finger style guys but I'm going to show you how I arrived at my technique and why I think it, it works well um, so firstly I want to talk about talk about using the thumb okay now when, when I'm talking about using the thumb I'm not talking about slap bass um, you know I, I used to use my thumb for slap bass and that was the only time I used it but I never used it when I was playing finger style I just used the two fingers um, and one thing that was clear from watching some of these jazz guys is that they were using their thumb when they were playing finger style to play notes um, they were using it to play notes as well as as well as for string damping and that's a really important thing as well uh, so we'll come on and we'll talk a little bit about string damping um, but I think I think what Matthew Garrison does when he plays is he plays with four four finger techniques. He uses his thumb and he uses his index, he uses his middle, and he uses his ring finger. And he has a kind of four finger technique: one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. I think kind of Abraham Laboreal does something similar as well. I think he, Abraham Laboreal even uses his pinky as well, which you know I've never got that far as using the pinky. Um, so yeah, I kind of started off by practicing that, but that's not actually the technique that I use. I never really kind of. I never found that one particularly comfortable. You know, you can get good speed out of it. You can get good speed out of it, but it was, it was the control that I was struggling to get. I couldn't get the kind of control with that technique. So what I decided to do was just to kind of get my thumb more involved. And this is really, really important. So the first thing that I would encourage you to practice if you're looking to kind of copy some of these techniques uh, is, is to start using your thumb when you're playing finger style playing as well as, as, well as your fingers. Um, and the first place to start is just by playing notes with alternating your thumb and your index finger. Um, so it, it works really well for crossing strings. So a good place to start with this is by doing octaves. So that's what I would do to start off with. I would just practice playing uh, index finger and thumb uh, on octaves. It doesn't really matter what notes you choose, so just something like that. So that's just index finger, I'm just playing index finger on the third string, and then uh, sorry, in, thumb, thumb on the third string, index finger on the first string, and just alternating notes with that. It, it's, actually, it's actually amazing how much you can do just with those two fingers. Uh, so yeah, that's a good place to start. Obviously, practice everything you do with, with, whenever you're doing kind of technical practice like this, it's always a good idea to use a metronome or a drum beat. Uh, I actually really like working with drum beats. Uh, they're a bit more kind of musical and a bit more interesting than, than just using metronomes. But having said that, I've actually got a video coming up uh, on on Tuesday. I'm going to post a video uh, about how to um, how to really improve your timing by using a metronome. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. Check me out on Johnny Cox Music. Johnny Cox Music. That's where you'll find me. So JohnnyCoxMusic.com. I'm also Johnny Cox Music on Facebook, and I'm Johnny Cox Music on YouTube as well. So I'll be posting videos on all of those platforms, and hopefully, maybe even Fundamental Changes will share share the video as well. So if you check Fundamental Changes, you might find it as well. But I'm planning on posting that video this coming Tuesday, so I try and post videos every Tuesday. So keep an eye out for those. Uh, but anyway, getting back to what I was saying. So yeah, tr practice doing that with a drum beat. Uh, it's easy to find drum beats. Just go onto YouTube and type in drum beat at whatever speed you want to practice at, and, and you'll find there's loads of great videos out there on. on YouTube just simple drum beats that you can you can spend hours practicing along with so just playing playing between your thumb and your index finger try it on different strings try playing it across strings where it works really really well try playing it on adjacent strings um, and also on the same string so that's almost the hardest one playing two playing notes on the same string keeping them very very even the goal here with your right hand is to try and make the notes sound even between your your thumb and your index finger, so they don't sound they don't sound like one is a lot louder than the other. Um, I should have probably prefaced this video by saying that the most important thing with with right hand techniques um, is is just is, is touch. It's like it's that thing of understanding how to make specific sounds. There's so many different sounds you can make out of your bass just by playing in different places, by playing softer, by playing harder, and it's having the control to do that and understanding where to play and how to play and how to hit the strings. That's what's going to give you that that really good kind of clarity and definition on your notes. Um, so that's what I would do, that's where I would start off with that. Um, that, that thumb and index finger thing it kind of formed the basis of, 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 of where I took this technique. Um, there's a little bit more to it than just that, but it is amazing what you can achieve just with, with that kind of thing. It works really well for kind of funky, fast, articulated bass lines. So I'm thinking stuff like... That's just my that's just my thumb and my index finger. That's all that is. It works really well for that kind of stuff, just kind of coming up with 
even sixteenths notes. It works really, really well. Um, so the next, the next thing that I want to talk about is the use of the ring finger. Okay, now the ring finger is really important to this technique as well. Um, once you can play notes between your your thumb, your index finger, and your ring finger, that that's really the basis of the technique right there. Um, now I, I actually use my middle finger less. I think the the reason why I struggled with the four finger technique. The reason why I found that one more difficult was because if you if you look at the shape of your hand, right, you've got your 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 thumb and your your third finger, your thumb and your ring finger, sorry, your index finger and your ring finger, they're virtually the same length, whereas your your middle finger is a lot longer. So if you if you're trying to play kind of really uh, smooth runs on the bass between your index, your middle, and your third finger, then it's a little bit uncomfortable because the the middle finger just wants to go in that little bit further than the other two whereas the other two kind of sit quite nicely and if you if you incorporate the thumb as well so just one two three one two three thumb first finger third finger leaving out the second finger then you can get some really nice even even patterns going and that, that's the fundamental basis of my technique uh, so the way that I would practice that, apart from just literally doing, you can literally start off by doing that if you want to, just again, just playing octaves, playing on adjacent strings, and then just playing on the same string, again, trying to make it very even, trying to make all the notes very even. So the obvious thing to do with that would be to practice scales. So scales are really, really important to practice. Um, so just say, for example, I take a C major scale. Uh, I can play a C major scale playing using those those fingers. Now three three notes per string is a good place to go as well. So uh, so um, yeah. So obviously, if you're using playing three notes per string, then on each string you're going to play thumb, index, third fingers. Each finger plays once in your right hand. So if I play that C major scale, three notes per string, it's going to go thumb, index, third finger, thumb, index, third finger, thumb, index, third finger, thumb, index, third finger, okay? And then you can do the same in reverse, thumb, index, third, thumb, index, third, thumb, index, third, thumb, index, third. So that's that's essentially it. That's essentially the technique that I use. There are certain situations where I'll, I'll bring in I'll bring in the fourth finger as uh, sorry, the second finger as well. Uh, kind of like a classical guitar technique, I suppose, with P I M A. For any of those of you who are familiar with classical guitar technique, um, I might use that if I'm playing chords, things like that, four note chords on the bass. You could even do. Um, kind of guitar picking patterns um, using that kind of thing. I teach guitar as well as bass. Bass is my first instrument but I also teach guitar so those kind of guitar things come quite naturally to me on the bass. Um, so I do use the middle finger as well. So, uh, But the main fundamental thing of the technique is using thumb, index finger, ring finger. And I find that works for just about every situation. It works for, for you know, 16th notes. It works really well for triplets, obviously, because you're using three fingers. So it naturally sits into that kind of one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. But you can also play one, two, three, four, 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 one, two, three, four. So it works for 16th notes as well. Uh, I've, I've not really found too many situations where it doesn't work. Um, so it's a really useful thing to have, especially when you're playing kind of fast articulated runs. So when you're playing things like 16th note runs, triplet runs, it works really, really well. So anyway, let me, let me give you a kind of practical demonstration of, of how I would use this. So I'm going to use an example from my book. So this is uh, Improve Your Groove, my, my book that was released by Fundamental Changes earlier this year. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it's, um, it's not a book that's about right hand technique. That's not what it's about. It's not even about technique at all. What it is, it's about groove and it's about time and it's about ha it's about having a system for improving your timing uh, and really practicing kind of in a in a positive way to improve. Um, but having said that, it kind of covers a lot of ground from some of the real basics up to some quite complicated stuff. So I'm going to pick out one of the more complicated examples in the book. This is uh, example 5R1 for those of you who have the book and want to follow on. And for anyone who doesn't, I would highly recommend getting it. So uh, yeah, please feel free to check it out, improve your groove. Uh, so this is example 5R1. I'm going to play it nice and slowly uh, just to demonstrate it and show you how I'm going to apply this three finger technique to playing it. So it goes like this. Okay, let me put 
let me actually do exactly what I was telling you. I'm going to put a drum beat on that, um, and you'll hear what it sounds like with a drum beat. Uh, so I'm going to do exactly what I was recommending and just go straight onto YouTube and find a drum beat uh, and practice by playing it with a drum beat. So this is just a, a drum beat at 80 beats per minute, so quite a nice gentle tempo. So. That's the example there. So what am I doing there with my right hand? How am I playing that? It's quite an awkward little groove. I deliberately wrote it to be quite quite a difficult one. Um, most most of the examples in the book are much much more straightforward. As I say, it's a book that's about timekeeping and how do you keep time and how do you improve your groove more than it is about technique. Um, so it's got some very very simple grooves in it and it's got some more complex grooves like this one and a lot of a lot of kind of ex explanation of my system of how to really uh, play those rhythms accurately. Um, so anyway, this this uh, particular groove, it, the chord progression is essentially kind of B B minor, A major, G major, A major. So those are the chords that are going over it. Um, we're starting on a B on the second fret of the third string, and I'm playing with my thumb. So I'm going B open string A, and then back to B. And all that is is just the thumb and index finger. So thumb, index finger, thumb. Okay, and then uh, I'm playing. It's, it's this kind of shape here, but. So it's kind of like a, I suppose you call it a B sus two or a kind of B nine shape. Um, so it's just a B, an F sharp on the fourth fret of the uh, second string, and a C sharp on the sixth fret of the uh, first string. And there, that's where I'm getting my third finger involved. So I'm going thumb on the B, index finger, third finger is playing that first string. Try to make sure that try to make sure that each of those notes is, is a separate note. It doesn't kind of come out like a chord. Okay. Now notice that my thumb, while I'm doing that, is 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 damping these these two strings here, the fourth string and the third string. That's a really really important part of the technique as well. So the thumb's keeping these low strings under control. You don't want a load of kind of resonant ambient noise coming from your low strings. So the thumb's really keeping control of that. Okay. So the the groove we have so far. Okay, so that's thumb, index, thumb, thumb, index, third finger, ring finger. Okay, that's what we've got so far. Now we're going to the open string A, uh, so this is the second chord. So that, that was all over the B minor that we play that. And now we go to the A chord, so it's open A string, and then that's your thumb, index finger on the B, back to the back to the open A again. So and now that's with the thumb. So it's okay. So it's now we've got another note here, an A on the the first the first string, second fret, and that I'm using my third finger with the right hand. So my third finger is getting involved again, and then back to the open string, and then it goes to a G. Okay, so this is my third chord, G major. I'm going to play octaves on the G, and they're going to be played between my third finger and my thumb. Starting on the starting on the fifth fret of the second string, and then going down to the third fret on the fourth string. So it's third finger, thumb, third finger, thumb with my right hand. Okay, so we've got. Okay, uh, now uh, we're going to carry on playing that G on the second the second string again, then down to the low G, and then down to an F sharp. Now that part there is going to have to be played. Third finger plays the second string. Thumb, index finger. Okay, so we've got. Okay, so that's as far as we've got. Now we've got this last little sixteenth note run, which is probably the trickiest part to play in terms of the right hand technique. Maybe, maybe the left hand as well. Uh, so it goes F sharp. G, A. So that's second fret, third fret on the fourth string, open string A. Third finger uh, plays the, the octave A on the second fret of the first string. So we've got thumb, index, thumb, third finger. Thumb, index, thumb, third finger. F sharp, G, A, octave A. Now back to the open string A with your thumb. So it's thumb, index, thumb, third finger, thumb, and then 
first finger goes to B flat on the first fret of the third string, and then the octave B flat with your third finger on the first string, third fret. Okay, and that's the whole groove, and it repeats after that. So it's. drum beat back on so you can hear what that sounds like. I'll speed it up a little bit so I'll go for a slightly faster drum beat this time. If you're not used to if you're not used to these techniques, um, practice them really really slowly. That's the thing that I, I can I can really uh, can't stress strongly enough. It's so important uh, when you're incorporating any kind of new technique to really practice it slowly. So um, yeah, so let, let's just sum up everything that we've been through. Basically, when you're playing fingerstyle bass, I would really recommend using the thumb and the third finger more. Uh, it really helps with your articulation, it really helps with your phrasing. There's things that you'll really struggle to do with two fingers that when you use this, you know, when you use the thumb and the third finger as well, it suddenly becomes so much easier. Um, there's, there's grooves that, I remember grooves that I used to play with two fingers, like... Um, it was so hard to get fast and then suddenly, as soon as I applied this technique to them... Became so much easier. You, you can just get that speed and that that kind of articulation, and it just comes very very easily. So really try and slow things down. Um, if you're interested in any of my right hand techniques, obviously there's a whole load of stuff that I haven't gone over in this lesson. I had to go over as quickly as possible. Um, so if you're interested, get in touch with me for lessons. You can find me Johnny Cox Music. As I say, JohnnyCoxMusic.com is my website. Johnny Cox Music is my YouTube channel and my Facebook page. So you can find me on any of those. And uh, yeah, I'm a bass teacher, that's what I do for a living. So if you're interested in having lessons, then let me know. Um, and uh, yeah, I can teach you some of this stuff. Um, so yeah, Walter contacted me in the week actually. Walter uh, contacted me with a really good question. I hope so, I hope you're watching Walter. Anyway, hello if you are. Uh, he contacted me with a really good question about my right hand technique. And he was asking me if I play with a very light touch and with a low action on my bass. Uh, and the answers to those questions are yes I do play with a fairly light touch um, so I think as a starting point you want to play quite light uh, that's how you get the real speed and articulation if you dig in too much it kind of kills the speed and the articulation uh, so you do want to play as light as possible but my action is actually not that low uh, I keep you know I would say probably medium low uh, is my action I don't want my action getting too low I know a lot of the guys who play with real, real speed, they like to play with a very low action um, because the, the, the low action encourages a light touch, which encourages then the speed as well. Uh, the problem is with that, if you have a very light, um, if you have a very low action on your guitar, uh, meaning the, the strings are very close to the frets, it means if you do ever need to dig in, if you're ever in a musical situation where you wanna have that slightly heavier touch and you wanna dig in a bit more, you can't really go there without getting loads of fret noise. Now I know that some people like the fret noise and it's kind of part of their sound and you know that's fine those guys obviously have very low actions on their basses but for me I want to know that I can kind of dig in and if there's ever a situation where I need to dig in I want to be able to do that and still not have the the frets rattling and buzzing all over the place. So my action's not that light but my, my touch is quite light with my right hand and that's where I'd recommend you start. Try and start with as light a touch as possible and then you'll get the really, you'll get the really smooth. You'll get the, you'll get more articulation on your notes, and it'll be clearer what you're playing, and your rhythm will be clearer as well. So um, yeah. Definitely, I would recommend light touch, but don't go too low with the action. That would be my that would be my warning. Thanks so much for watching, and as I say, feel free to check out Johnny Cox Music. <laughs>